What's good? It's your boy CJ Goodfellow. We're back with the Boxing Clinic. You know, early morning grind. Talking about Chris E. Banks Jr. and Abney Uterum. Um, you know, opening uh, round for both guys in the World, Bo World Boxing Super Series Tournament. Um, going down this Saturday. Uh, kind of slipped my mind. Or I did, it, did, it, did this uh, prediction video in the beginning of the week. But we here. We working. And, um, uh, this, you know, interesting fight. I looked at Abney Uterman. I looked at all the participants in the super middleweight division once this tournament was uh, announced. I look at Avni Uterman. At first, I looked at him as a filler in the tournament, and uh, the guy Robert Brandt is fighting. I looked at him as fillers. Um, um, you can obviously make the case that Jamie Cox is a filler, uh, a filler, and the guy that Callum Smith, Eric, uh, whatever the game guy name is, was a filler as well. But he gave Callum Smith a nice run for his money. Um, but uh, Avni Uterman, he's undefeated. He's, uh, I think he's 16-0 with 10 knockouts uh, right around there. Uh, Chrissy Banks Jr. is 25-1 with 19 knockouts. Um, some bad blood going between these guys. I kind of briefly looked at the press conference. And, you know, Uterman, you know, <laughs> a guy who don't speak English, you know, got a little heated at E. Banks Jr. But, uh, you know, if you haven't seen Avni Uterman fight, basically, um, it's a pressure fighter who can't cut the ring off, uh, follows his opponent around the ring. Um, watch the Marco Antonio Parabon fight. Um, Parabon go wherever you want the way to go. Um, you can go right, left. Shit, he could have went anywhere he wanted to go. Eventually, you know, Uterman, you know, got him to be a stationary target because he got too tired from moving. But when he did move, he was able to go whichever way he wanted to go. Um, Uterman, you know, Avni, whatever you want to call him, he don't step over, cut the ring off. A lot of guys don't, you know. He don't know how to cut the ring off on his opponent. So you got to be able to move. And stick and move as long as your legs and your stamina will allow you to do. Most guys' stamina and legs on the level he's been fighting at, they ain't going to be able to do that. You know, he's the guy that's going to come forward. He kind of got like a quick jab. He don't have a power jab for a pressure guy. Kind of like a flickering jab. He kind of he kind of throws it. It's kind of, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nice, um, you know, good solid jab, man. It's really above average. Um, other than that, he don't throw anything with significant, that really caught my eye. You know, he he would mix in a little short left hand. Um, like the right hook, you know, like to throw it overhand, like to slap with it. He occasionally go to the body. Um, won't slip, won't move his head. He's not a slipper. He's basically a pressure fighter, you know, hunched over, bringing the pressure. He's built like a pressure fighter. Um, you know, going to come forward. The difference is for Chris E. Banks Jr. from his last fight and this fight is that, um, you know, Arthur Abraham come forward and put the guard, the high guard up, but um, he will not throw. You know, he just likes to catch you way on the back end. You know, Uterman is just going to throw, you know, and he's going to throw with reckless abandonment. You know, he he has his spurts, but one, if you, you can catch him in between his combinations. Uh, most of us is probably seeing Chrissy Banks Jr. fight. Um, he kind of shows some patience in the Arthur Abraham fight, you know. Um, he's one of those hyper guys, you know. Um, like to throw a thousand punches uh, um, <laughs> in the combination. You know, that's what he is. He's hyper. That's his problem. He's just too hyper, too explosive, too busy. He, he's not relaxed in his attack. You know, he don't just sit back and, and change the pace. He knows one pace and let's go hard. That's 100 miles an hour. And that's his issue, you know, and that's how he fights, you know. He got the stamina to carry it for 12 rounds. But when you start fighting guys that can pick their shots... <laughs> They can set you up and walk you into things, you know, then he going to get in trouble, you know, but this ain't that fight. But um, he showed some patience in the in the uh, Arthur Abraham fight. You know, Arthur Abraham came forward. He was able to, you know, kind of be a little bit uh, more responsible on the defensive end, pick his shots, pick when he wanted to use his explosive combinations. And he eased on, you know, with Abby, Abby and Uterman, he's going to be able to do something similar. But I think for him, um, start off with Christy Banks Jr. is very important. To him to go to the body, um, talk about his uh, game plan, go to the body early and often, um, and, and deflate the tires from Uterman. You know, I think it's important to punch in between Uterman's combinations, to punch with him. Um, you know, I think it's, it's I think it's important just to walk him into shots, you know, and then, you know, mix in your explosive combinations and push him back on the back foot. And I, and I think uh, Creasy makes Jr. has just success with that simple game plan. It's just that simple. Um you know, punch with the guy to the body, then punch with the guy and put him on the back foot and push him forward at times and just continue to move, 
you know, laterally, stick and move, and pick your shots when they explode. You know, I think base, the basis of this fight is to, to take the core and take the legs out of Uterman, tire the power, the, the power fighter, the, the inside pressure fighter down. And once you start seeing him get tired and trying to be on the back foot, you push him on the back foot, he ain't coming forward no more. You take his ass and drown his ass in deep end for Uterman. Um, you know, basically, you know, I think it's body work for him as well. You know, Chrissy Banks Jr. showed solid stamina, um, body work, um, you know, smother Chrissy Banks Jr. on the ropes, um, trying to be dirty and nasty with him, hit him on the elbows, the arms, the body, the head. Uh, Uterman got a nice little sneaky right uppercut as well. And so does Eve Cree, Eve, Eve, Chrissy Banks Jr. He got a good little uh, uppercut, both hands, and that could be a game changer for Ebex Jr. Let me slip that in there. But for uh, Uterman, it's just be a, make it a nasty dog fight. Pressure this guy, follow this guy, um, you know, grab him on the ropes, hold him on the ropes, hit him on the hip, hit him on the head, rabbit punches a little bit. I know it's illegal, but you got to make it a dog fight. You got to make this guy pressure. You got to kill the body. You got to take his legs away and just continually apply pressure. You know, I know he's not going to become Earl Spencer Triple G overnight with cutting the ring off. I know that. But he's going to just smother this guy, wear this guy down, put the jab on him. Work it to the body, hit the hips, hit everything on him, just make it a nasty dog fight. And that's the only real only real reason, only real um way he can win. I know it indicates that he's sixteen with ten knockouts, but I didn't see explosive piercing power. I didn't see thudding power. I didn't see a lot of, you know, game changing power in his hands. You know, anything can happen when you're a pressure fire, you can wear a guy down. Well E Banks Jr., um, you know, he got he don't have the power that he could have had at middleweight, but he's still learning and still developing. I like Chris Ebanks Jr. to win a wide unanimous decision here. Um, possibility of a late stoppage, but I'm, I'm just going to uh, wide unanimous decision. I think this got a chance to be a great, great action-packed fight, but we gone.